It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott is here. Mary Jo Foley is there. And we will talk about Windows 11. What would you guess, just before you hear the show, what would you guess the total uh, penetration is of Windows 11 compared to, say, Windows 10? We'll also talk about Microsoft Build. The dates have been announced, but not live, not this time. And the beer of the week with a scary name, but a pretty nice look. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, episode 770, recorded Wednesday, March 30th, 2022. Harry Shooters. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft. To your left in the orange trunks, Paul Therott of Therott.com. To your right in the blue and green, it's Mary Jo Foley of AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Together, they form the dynamic duo of Windows journalism, the Windows Weekly Such crew. as it is. Such as it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of competition. Uh, hello, hello, boys. It's freezing cold on the East Coast. Yes, yeah, it is. It is. Hi. I'm so sorry. It's ending tomorrow, tonight. It is. We switch, we're switching yeah. over. Yeah. And now it's going to be spring. Normal. spring. Back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. So weird. Yes. I forgot about it's that. Just, when I was a kid yeah, growing up in there's no England. clean break with the yeah. seasons here. Yeah, no. so it's like two steps forward, one step back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> having said that, we can now, you know, small talk aside, get down to the most important stuff. Windows 11. Stagnation? Is that the word you really wanted to use? Stagnation nation, the Windows story. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean stagnates? From a usage perspective. So, Doesn't you know, go we do up. that monthly check-in. Well, it has been going up. In fact, some months it's gone up pretty dramatically. Yeah. Um, but this month to last month, it's only gone up 0.1%. I guess that's 0.1 percentage point, mm -hmm. technically. But uh, it's uh, Windows 11 now accounts for 19.4% of the overall base of Windows 10 and Windows 11, right? So, yeah. And last month it must have been what did I say nineteen point yeah nineteen point three. What so does really this mean? Changed. Everybody who wanted Windows eleven has it, and now we're done. I don't think it means anything. I I think uh, you know because when you look at the stuff month to month, it's like whatever. I, I yeah. I think the important thing to look at is going to be you know a year out from when yeah. Windows eleven launched or yeah. whatever. So, yeah. um, and I think there are also statistical anomalies month to month. I the the interesting thing to me here. Well, I, look, Windows eleven's growth is interesting, of course. Um, uh, where the top, you know, the top two versions of Windows 10 uh, are, or, or well, Windows, I guess, you know, Windows 10 version uh, 21H2 is the most popular version, if you will, 28.5%. And then 21H1 is 26.5. So they're pretty close. And those are the two, two most recent versions. That's great. That's the way it should be. That's what we're looking at. And then, uh, you know, Windows 11 is, I guess, in third. What, what is place, it? So, so Windows 11 is 5, 10, 15? 20%? 19. 19.4. 19. Okay. Yeah. That ain't bad. One in yeah. five Windows users is using yeah. 11. That's true. Yeah. That's probably all Microsoft expected or no. Well, I mean, I yeah, given the way, yeah, I mean, they did kind of, a, they launched it too early for, in my opinion, but it went out on whatever number of PCs uh, it has been. I think they've opened the floodgates on the upgrades, you know, the computers that can get it are mm -hmm. getting it. Uh, although I just got a new PC in for review, interestingly, that has Windows 10 on it. I didn't what? expect to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And I also yeah. brought up an older PC. Which one was it? I don't remember. But I brought up an older PC the other day that has been on Windows 10, and I've been leaving it on Windows 10, and it was offered Windows 11 for the first time huh. somewhere, somewhere in that downtime of the past couple of months. So huh. I think that's the end of the line right there, I would say, for upgrade possibilities. 
there are some that can't upgrade, right? Lots. I mean, that's, that's what, yeah. Probably majority, right. I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. And there are also a lot of businesses who are like, we are not ready to go no. to Windows 11. Windows yeah. 10 works great. We're yeah. staying on Windows 10. <laughs> and again, we, I say it every week, but there isn't really a strongly compelling reason to go to Windows 11. It's just the new look. If you like it, yeah, yeah. it's nice. It's prettier. And then yeah. you kind of end it there because yeah. honestly, well, that's not fair. I guess th there's some nice little, you know, snap features and things like that that are kind of nice. But I keep running into little problems. I was ranting on Twitter this morning about this, like w Windows has this notion of sound schemes, right? So by default, you get the Windows default sound scheme. And I turn that off because I don't like the sounds. And this, you know, mm. uh, I, I, you may recall I was having problems with this Focusrite device I used to connect the microphone to USB. It would disconnect, reconnect, disconnect, reconnect. And every time that happens, there's a little dialogue that comes up. And then there's this, it's like, bam, 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 you know, it keeps <laughs> making these sounds. It did yeah. this several times this morning, which was particularly aggravating to me because I've already turned off the sounds. <laughs> But the sounds keep yeah. getting turned back on somehow. And this is something that Windows 10 never did, but Windows 10 does. You know, it's just, I don't know. It's yeah. a little, there's little things like that. So I, it's this yeah. kind of a fit and finish problem, I would say, with Windows mm -hmm. 10, 11. Yeah. And I feel like every, every month or couple of months, we get another little, okay, now we fix the, you know, what, I don't even know what these features are called. Like the, kind of bar that you see when you adjust volume and stuff like things that yeah. some people seem yeah. to really be obsessed with. Just cosmetic about and, improvements. Yeah. <laughs> lipstick yeah. on a pig if one. <laughs> kind That's, of. Well, by the way, yeah. this is the literal definition of lipstick on a pig. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it really is. I mean, in the sense that. that I mean, bad, look, folks. You're going to. No, good. no. I mean, well, but that, no, but that when that phrase, the reason it exists is it's really just kind of an arbitrary UI change. I, the, the new Windows 11 UI doesn't make anyone more efficient. In fact, it makes a lot of people less efficient. It is, it's prettier, and that's kind of a subjective yeah. thing, but it, it literally, the, the problem is it, it, it arrived with a lot of functional degradation. And, um, you know, for people who are used to Windows, which is like yeah. everyone using Windows, you know, um, uh, yeah, there are problems. So, yeah. Yeah. They yeah, did. Don't rush into it. The one thing I've heard in, uh, from my radio audience, who are the mm -hmm. people that I know that are debating this 10 or 11 thing, mm -hmm. yeah. is I don't want to go to 11 because I'm going to lose some things I like. Yeah. Okay. That's like, reasonable. What, do you remember any of the things? No, I don't. But <laughs> yeah. he knew. Well, so, probably like, yeah, right click on the taskbar, that kind of stuff. Right? Uh, are there apps yeah. that get turned off too? Like, uh, um, like remember when they you know, killed Media Center? Is, is right. It, There's a bigger change in the availability of apps if you do if you get it on a computer or do a clean install, mm -hmm. because there are if you upgrade from Windows 10 to 11, I think it's not going to delete anything. It's not going to. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. It's only if you go um, for clean install that you won't have everything that you thought you would have. Yeah, I mean, right. I'm trying to think if there's a, 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 an exception to that. I, off the top of my head, I don't believe so. But okay. Uh, but yes, if you, like for example, Skype does not come with Windows 11. So if you upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11, you have Skype. Skype is still there. Yeah, you course. lose yeah. that meet and you now could, feature in the taskbar and all that. You stuff. could you manually get. download it and and still That's have right. it. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, you're not really gonna. It's not like the media center thing where they just killed something. Um, well, you know what? So I don't. I'm afraid to say yes to. So it's possible that there are things like that that were deleted that I'm just not remembering. So I don't yeah. want to say that definitively. Yeah. But well, you know who the, remembers the, and cares is the one person using that thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah, the yeah, rest of us go really. That's why you're yeah. not. You know what? Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, clip clip champ. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The hardest to say product name of any product. It's so hard to say. <laughs> Clipchamp uh, is now in 10 too, right? So even that, you, there's nothing you go to 11 to get besides the look. That, that you couldn't have. That right? you couldn't have. Even the search. You don't even get a price cut. It's exactly the same. <laughs> same thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I just wanted to clarify that from my own uh yeah. Notes. Yeah, so I should. I, I was just that. trying to look this up. I don't want to say definitively, but I, I, if you do an upgrade from ten to eleven, I don't believe there's anything major that gets deleted or whatever. Um, you should look. You should go to killedbymicrosoft.info. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find right, out. That's a good point. I, I right, added that right. to the notes. I'm like, we gotta at least. Google has a page briefly. like that, so Microsoft yeah, sure. should. Yeah. You know, any any now company could have a page like yeah. that. We could have this a page is new, like though. that. Podcasts yeah, we've just, killed. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
Yeah. So yeah, this just showed up this week, which was kind of funny, right? Um, right. I don't even know whose site this is it's or pretty. who did this. It's very pretty. <laughs> so you go to killbymicrosoft.info um, and there's a list of 70 products that over time Microsoft has gotten rid of. And I was looking through this list. I'm like, does anything on here surprise me? And there is one on here oh. that I was like, I forgot about that. Windows That's 10 right. IoT Core. Yeah. Windows 10 IoT, IoT right. Core. Yeah. They're missing a lot of stuff, by the way. I'm just. Oh, yeah. There's tons the of stuff that's missing. It's a work in yeah, progress. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah. a lot Phones more that Microsoft phone system is. Is, should be in there. I mean, yeah. there's a ton of hardware products. Yeah. There is a lot of stuff that should be in here that's not. Um, the Outlook phone that everyone forgets existed. Oh, there's a bunch of oh, phones. Yeah. What the Kin? Is the Kin yeah. in there? The Kin is there. The Kin is, yep, okay. Kin is there. Yeah. <laughs> Windows Movie Maker, which has been, I think, yeah. nicely replaced by Clip Cam. Uh Mac Bat Point. Oh yeah. I actually yeah, really, you know, with a company that's been around for forty years yeah. or whatever, you could probably find right. a large group of things. I think that you know, this is obviously a big problem in the Google sphere, you know, and, and Google yeah. is kind of infamous for killing services without any warning and, and <laughs> yeah. it's surprising people because a lot of people seem to use them, et cetera, et cetera. I don't Microsoft doesn't really do that too much. I mean, I no. In fact, they're um, famous for leg. For you know, supporting legacy. Along, yeah, 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 yeah. For too long, if anything. Too yeah. long, if anything. But yeah. but of course, things do have to go by the way. I mean, by the way, said of course. You yeah. know, that's yeah. This is nice. At least they divide it into software, services, and hardware, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe maybe there is a person's name associated with this. Fabiano thing. Riccardi. Yeah, Fabiano Riccardi, um, whoever that is. But, but it looks like he GitHub. took over from something done by Cody Ogden. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, the IoT core one surprised me because... Oh, oh Ogden did Killed by Google. That's what oh, it is. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So That's this is this is some of okay. the... And it's on GitHub, which is hysterical. <laughs> it is. It's a that GitHub page. <laughs> So, okay. So that's cool, actually. He he yeah. said, oh, well, why should Google be the only one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. The other, A lot of these, I'm, uh, some of them you can kind of split hairs too, like Skype for Business is on here. And that technically isn't dead. Um, it says October yeah. 2025 there, right? Um, it probably shouldn't be on the list. I, yeah. It probably should not be because well, it's not yet. Good news. Gone. It's essentially a wiki. <laughs> it's a GitHub wiki. You yeah. can add yeah. anything you want yeah. to it. Sure. So I mean, you, suggestions. God yeah. knows I have a lot of free time to contribute free content to someone else. But I, you know, <laughs> that's great. So it's yes. it is actually based. I thought it looked familiar on the Killed yeah. by Google. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I like the look of it. The Killed by Google list is a lot longer. It is. <laughs> and a lot it bitter, is. more bitter. <laughs> yeah. This should be one of these for Apple because you know they. That would be kind of interesting as well. I, I feel like that audience is a little more accepting of things as Apple moves along, you know. Well, in fact, we always compare it to Microsoft. Like, see, you know, Apple's yeah. willing yeah. To, to move on and Microsoft isn't. Right. And that's why Apple's better in every respect. Well, there, there or I, you could look at it I as Microsoft, it. <laughs> Microsoft keeps um, supporting its right, customers, right? Exactly. Which is good. Another, perfectly you know, that's a very glass legit. half full way of looking at it, Mary yes. Jo. But <laughs> no, you know what? That's <laughs> nice. the enterprise way of looking oh, exactly at it. Exactly right. Is their major customer no, base. For so, sure. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was a cute site and. You're right. There could be a lot more on here. Oh, there should be a lot more there. on this. There will. I'm going to yeah. be, uh, Silverlight is going to be is one of my upcoming topics. Oh, Silverlight it's right there. is a yeah. It's um, <laughs> the the Apple like intersects with the, the history of Microsoft many many times, of course, and yeah. uh, this is one of them, believe it or not. And um, the reason is because Steve Jobs killed Flash on the iPad mm -hmm. and on the iPhone, mm -hmm. and th yep. that model of browser plugin is what Silverlight was. And the yep. second that he did that, Silverlight was dead technology walking. They killed it shortly mm -hmm. thereafter. Yeah. Let's not revisit my traumatic Silverlight story. We've already done that <laughs> on the show. Yeah. What, is that? what part of Microsoft is uh, Bob Muglia run again? I can't remember. Uh, speaking of uh, GitHub, I want to congratulate Christina Warren, who has moved over yeah. from yeah. Uh, still in Microsoft world, I guess, but moved from her senior uh, uh, dev relations position at Microsoft to GitHub. 
Yeah. Well, and you know, it's funny. She posts la- at the end of last week, I'm leaving Microsoft. And I'm like, I can't whoa, believe she's leaving Microsoft. Right? And then she's like, oh, I'm going to GitHub. I'm like, wait, they own, they're own they owned by Microsoft. <laughs> but I think from her point of view and from the point of view of somebody who works there, probably is a different. I mean, They want it, to pretend it's a different company. Yeah. They is would the like building the same? Yeah. I mean, does she just put her things in her box and go down the hall? I or, don't know. You know what? We'll ask her. She's going to be on Twitter on Sunday. So I'll ask her. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. The GitHub people, um, just like the LinkedIn people, like to pretend they're different right. companies, right. even though Microsoft owns them. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I think that's fine. I, I think... Uh, I, I think, think that's a good place for her. That's a great like a place really for nice her. place for if her. If I were her, if yeah. I'd be, I'd love, I'd love GitHub. Yeah. 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 I think it's awesome. I, like she's, she's the perfect person to go there. GitHub so, is, maybe yeah. she could fix the interaction of uh, Visual Studio to GitHub, which I can tell is you is not good. Freaking uh. nightmare. <laughs> I use GitHub for like everything just because it's an easy way to kind of back stuff up. Yeah. And then uh, I get a free website too. Uh, so mm-hmm. I back up in effect by doing a Git commit. Uh, when I update my website, uh, I get a, because I have, so the way I do my website is, is with a static website generator called Hugo. So it generates static HTML. Mm-hmm. Then I then I push that to GitHub. And right. then if you go to leolaport.github.io, it's the same as leo.fn. It's actually, that's it's little things like that. Well, this page yeah. is a perfect example. This is essentially yeah, but so- a free page. The process you just described, I'm going to guess you do that entirely from the command line. Yeah, because I like Git. No, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just, but I'm saying like that's the the problem is it's not a you Windows know what you're doing, experience. That's great. Yeah. No, and yeah. and the the few Windows types experiences I've ever seen, like the one that's built into Visual Studio, are, just, are terrible. Yeah. Like they're really bad. Well, that's too bad. Mm. You should. Yeah. I'm telling you, Emacs has the best. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> no, I don't think you're the joking. I'm, I'm best Git uh, plugin called Mugit. So Mug I think it? about Emacs every <laughs> single day Mug of my it. life, Leo. And the reason you is should. right around the corner. Yes. No, this is not for the reason you think. Oh, there's a there's a, a business on the edge of my our uh, neighborhood called Emac, which is the oh, Emmaus Aquatic Club. Oh, and it's a swimming pool and that's you know, blah, hysterical. Blah, blah, blah. And, and I think I, I, in my head, I make an Emacs joke <laughs> every almost every day. Time. And then I look at my wife and I realize she's not interested yeah, in this humor. No, no. But I think about it all the time. Yeah, but I, yeah. You just laugh to yourself privately. I, I know. I just, I I what are you laughing at? Nothing. Like, so what's sorry. wrong with the vi- Visual Studio Code uh, GitHub? I mean, I, that should work beautifully. I don't understand yep, why. It I, should. I know. I know. Huh. How do I even describe it in a way that would make sense? Um it's very easy. So there are three things. Like if you, because um, I, I we're going to talk about this a little bit, a little bit later. Oh, we'll save it. If, if you, you, want. you, you don't have to. Well, it's just part stuff. of the whole. I yeah. Let's just save it. For later. Yeah, save it's, it. It's good. No, that's a good tease. I can't wait to hear what's wrong <laughs> with Git and Visual Studio. That's good. <laughs> well, I, I, it's what's wrong with it is you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> say, mm, mm, don't 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 spoil it. <laughs> uh, I don't want to have to slap you, Paul. Uh, Please. <laughs> God help you if no. you have any issue in the GitHub stream. Then you have to go back to the command line, which is fine if you know what you're doing. But yeah, I love Git. Well, that's the thing. There are I literally think things you can't do from Visual. I'm of the opinion that if you're using Git, you should learn how to use it from the command line. And then anything else yeah. on top of that is gravy. But that's interesting. Me. I did that's use just GitHub me. to publish the book. Yeah, see, Git, there you go. Perfect person. example. Now, I mean, then there's Git, which is a great program and, and by itself. Yeah. And then GitHub is a really good, pl- you know, and I have to yeah. say, I was like everybody when Microsoft bought them, a little looking askance, right. Right. Uh, yep. but they have been well, great Leo, stewards. you'll be excited to know that Visual GitHub 2022 will be coming out soon. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there already is, GitHub has its own apps and, uh, and, sure. and all of that. So there's lots yeah. of ways to do it. But the third party uh, apps too, like the, yeah, it, like my Git. Um, hey, we can declare victory. <laughs> can we? Yes, and we're going to do that in one moment. Okay, the moment has passed. Let's declare <laughs> victory. <laughs> no, I think yep. this. I think you can say safely say this is because of you guys. <laughs> I, I think. I think uh, we can definitely say it's because of bad feedback. Bad, from many bad people. press. <laughs> and who is the press? Yeah, we're you the guys. press. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I wish. I wish we could take credit for this. Tell us what we're talking about. Yeah, so or also I'm going to rant on this one too. Um, <laughs> so uh, Microsoft did a C-Week update, you know, which is when they 
let IT managers see what's going to be in Patch Tuesday. So they did their usual one this week. Um, there's a long change list of what is coming um, in this cumulative update on Patch Tuesday. You know what's not mentioned? Uh, yep. What's not <laughs> mentioned is at all is that, oh, the set default browser button is back. But yeah, it's it's there. So but does it work? <laughs> yes, mm. it does. Um, it works. So it works for the for at least a few of the most important categories that people care about. It doesn't set every setting, right? Like, but we knew that because they had been testing this since last year in the dev channel. Right. So we knew how this was going to work. Um, but I, the most appalling thing to me is they didn't even acknowledge that this is in there and this is a big deal, right? Like it, I, I asked them, is this in there? And I didn't get an answer. So I'm like, let me download the C-Week, even though I never do this. Like I, I was a seeker. I went, got it, downloaded it. I'm like, yeah, it's there. dash eeker Yes. <laughs> oh, is that what C-Week means? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you, you can now with a single button like you do in Windows 10, go back and set most of the default settings in one place at one time instead of having to go through this long list they have of which app do you want to be associated with this? Which one with this? Which one with this? Uh, that was just that was just really a way to make it so it was hard to switch out of Edge. They can say whatever they want about the reason they did that, but that's what it was. <laughs> so does this I'll tell you, fulfill your dreams, Paul? I mean, does it do what you wanted the one-click button to do? Does it do what it used to no, do? No, no, of course not. But okay. it, uh, no, it's not this. It, it doesn't. Here's the, it doesn't, but... It is, look. It's not when the they, same. It's not the same. When we looked into this last fall, the thing that I did finally determined was there were four, maybe five file types or link types that you needed to change to get the effect of what we're getting now with a single click. And those things are HTM and HTML, uh, HTTP and HTTPS, and optionally, if you like to use your other browser, whatever it is for PDF, you could change that one as well. So like the most so obvious you, protocols. Are, yeah. Yeah. So, if, yeah. And if you go into this thing and you say, well, I want to make uh, Chrome my default browser, those those are literally the five things that change. The other uh, file associations that Chrome, in this case, could take on, SHTML, SVG, WebP, et cetera, et cetera, FTP, these things are not converted from, uh, from Edge. So it's not, it's actually not the same, but Microsoft has been subtly, non-subtly moving away from that one-click actually works thing for a couple of Windows versions now. You know, back in Windows 8, Windows 7, I think, you could literally go in and say, I want everything on this new thing. And it would, you could, there was a way to do that. Now it's still very ponderous. But mm. I honestly, the, the biggest advantage of this being there, other than we made them blink, is <laughs> you don't get that annoying pop-up on the first choice change where it says, are you sure you don't want to browse the web safely with Internet or a Microsoft Edge? It's so much better than the thing you're about to choose. Like they, there was that one last little. Are you, you know, sure you don't get that? Your, actually, I'm not sure because now I don't see it. <laughs> but I know I because I saw I, somebody say they still were getting the pop up when they went okay, to, okay. to choose. Well, so I actually, <laughs> so while we were while you were talking about it, I actually switched all the defaults back yeah. to Edge and then switched back to Chrome yeah. and I didn't see it. So actually, I'm not 100 percent sure. But yeah. um it's it, look. It's easier, it, it, and I think for most yeah. use cases, it solves the problem. But you got to remember, there's all those other things in Windows that are never going to go to your default browser. So, the widgets. Right. If you click on anything in widgets, that's opening an Edge. Start yeah. search. That's opening an Edge. Like yeah. you can't. You're not getting rid of Edge. You know, it's not. It's no. not. Re, it's it's. I find that to be, I don't know, dishonest, disingenuous. I'm not sure yeah. what the term is, but yeah. But, you know, again, without being you know, too pedantic about it, it's I think it solves the problem for most people. Now, let's be pedantic about it. You know what? It doesn't solve the problem. I'm really... <laughs> well, that's what we said before, stuff. is that just fixing those, you know, automatically do... It's, 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 a, it's, just, it's... You it's wanted like to change to everything. Something without, you, you, we've met the letter of the apology, but we haven't met the, right. the point of the complaint, which yeah. was... I want my browser to be my browser. <laughs> I want this thing I've chosen, right. whether it's Chrome or Firefox or Brave or whatever, to launch every single time anything related to the web happens. Mm. That's what I want. That's why I chose it. Yeah. Yeah. And Microsoft's not doing that. You know. No. But 
just the fact they did this much, I'm like, okay, this is good. Because all we knew up to this point yeah. was it was in the dev channel, yeah. which means it may or may not ever show up in the product, right? So then they no, just suddenly true. put it into this cumulative update that means it's going to be in the Patch Tuesday updates for everyone. So, we can't... Okay. It, it's kind of hard to say how we might have reacted if this was the interface to begin with, right? If, if right. Windows 11 shipped this way originally, I think most people would have looked at it, would have thought nothing of it. You know, if I yeah. go to, I, I don't know, I mean, like, I'll have to do this now, you know, install Chrome after this thing has been changed. Go in, Chrome will say, hey, do you want to be the default browser? You say, yes. Will that mm -hmm. cause this to happen or do I have to click a button? Mm -hmm. I probably have to click the button. Okay, whatever. I so it's like one extra step. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. It's not a big deal. I think no. most people will move right on and not think about it. And they'll think mm -hmm. they got the same thing. But I think people like me, you know, sorry, yeah. the people who are broken inside, will <laughs> see that list of things that are not switched over because it's right yeah. in front and center now yeah. and say, you know, this isn't actually the same as what yeah. they used to do a few versions ago. It's not. I, been, but it's so much better back. for normals. It is. So much better for normals. So. I think so. Yeah. Although, you know, but again, I, I don't know how confusing or weird it would be for someone uh, who was like, I am a Chrome user and I do mm -hmm. want to use widgets. And mm -hmm. every single time you click on a news story you know, about someone who looks great in a bikini or whatever the stupid thing is <laughs> that's in there all the time, uh, it's going to open into a different browser. And is that going to be weird? Yeah. Is that going to be upsetting? No, that is weird. Yeah, I don't like that. It is. I don't know. Oh, it's not. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. You're right. It is. But but trying to tell somebody before this button existed, like a normal person, like, here's how you have to go in and try yeah, to no, set that's... your browser as Chrome. Oh, the I'm worst. Like trying to explain this. The worst. I'm like, yep. yeah. <laughs> so, Paul, what is the protocol that you would want to reassign so that is Edge popping up just for things like in the Microsoft News? Feed so, the or? things I just described, you can't fix because they're going to, oh, they've actually prevented they're hard wire workarounds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, in the early days of Windows 11, which, by the way, was just six long months ago, um, <laughs> people figured out what those protocols were. They wrote little apps, right. or like browser makers yeah. wrote uh, like things news, that would prevent that. Colon slash slash. Microsoft is mm. yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. It was something. Yeah, it was some yeah, URL something. protocol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, it was a protocol handle or whatever. I don't remember the whatever it was. Doesn't matter because they're they're blocking those workarounds. So yeah. There's little things in here, like um, I, did I close it? I close it. But there were there were file formats like things like WebP or SVG, which are graphics formats mm -hmm. essentially. Those stay with Edge for some reason. Oh, I, that's weird. It's weird. Yeah. If you have a graphics application like Affinity Photo or Photoshop or something, you probably want to associate those with that, right? I guess, mm -hmm. and that would be true no matter what web browser you use. But right. I, I do find it odd that if you click on a WebP file or something. It will open and not in your browser. It will open some other browser, and it's yeah. like, I, what, what is the point of that? Right. You know? Yeah. So it's they can strange. say how many people are edge users and right. make sure that it right. opens some time in the month. Yeah, but edge users should be edge case edge users. users. <laughs> 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 you know? Honestly, I would yeah. use edge if they hadn't kind of junked yeah, it up. It up. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, it is Chrome, and so you can use all the Chrome extensions, right? And I still I use it, but I ha I have to keep going uh, in and like squashing things as they add them. Yeah. Like, okay, turn that yeah. off. Turn that it's off. Turn that off. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 as terrible as this sounds, um, I, I waited years for this to come together. I was so happy that they did this. I've always promoted the notion of what a lot of people want. I'm talking hundreds of millions, possibly billions of people is Chrome, but without all the yeah. Google stuff. De-Googled Chrome. What an yeah, opportunity it, for Microsoft. It sounds like such a great product. Yeah. And using both Chrome and Edge, I got to tell you, Chrome works way better than Edge. It's quicker. It comes together faster. If I uh, bring up a new computer and I have to sign into an account and have it load all my extensions and all that stuff, Chrome is like, boop, done. Edge, you got you sit there and you wait. You're like, Here, okay, it's eventually those things are going to... Mm. It's just... Are there there's other so much going on. Chromium yeah. browsers that... Uh, Maybe like Vivaldi that you like, or Brave that you like as much. I like Brave, but I, but you have to draw this line there because Brave isn't something I can recommend to kind of a broad audience. Like it's not something you would recommend on your radio show. Yeah, um, it's a little too technical. Right. Um, I, I, I there's. I, I Honestly, for the people who listen to my radio show, yeah, they use Safari on the Mac. They use Edge on Windows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the default. Right. And you just yep. 
don't you just I, use it. It's not worth fighting. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the disadvantages are so yeah. minor that it's not worth fighting. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. So for the technical audience, um, this is the, you know, the needs of the many outnay the need the way the needs of the few. I George W. Bush that somehow um, is <laughs> is true here, right? Like there's an enthusiast audience. They know what they're doing. They're technical. They can do this. I don't have to explain that to them. And so mm -hmm. if you're watching this show, probably you could handle Volvaldi or Brave or whatever browser you want to use, Opera, what it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, I, this is not something I would recommend to my wife, to my mother, to my family, you know, to normal people. So, yeah, you're kind of stuck with the big two or three, right? Yeah. So you're picking your poison there. You're going to be <laughs> stalked by somebody. <laughs> Good luck, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I wish it was better. I really, really, really wish that Edge was this streamlined Chromium thing. Yeah, and as it, it started out. And it could have out. a screen at yeah. the beginning with like a grid of features. What, you know, do you want any of these? Oh, no, yeah. you know. What yeah. could have been? Oh, I'd love that. I would be yeah. so, I'd be, I would be so happy. I think everybody would have been happy if they had just made a simple Edge, not something you want to customize or anything. That grid of features, that's fine, right. but that's for you. Yeah. But just a plain, clean, simple yeah. browser yeah. Handled well, PDFs. Every time um, edge talk light. to anyone, edge light, anyone, <laughs> edge light, <laughs> edge light, edge S. Anyone who, anyone who works for mode. a company that makes browsers <laughs> talks about getting, you know, getting out of the way of all the yeah. content, you know, let the content mm -hmm. shine through. It's about the content, not the Chrome and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And now there's like 118 built in features in Edge. And it's like, yeah, now it's about your content. Like, mm -hmm. it's, well, that's, people just want to go to the sites they go to. They don't want your nonsense for collecting. Welcome, welcome to of capitalism. That, you know, that's you know, yeah. in a yeah. nutshell, what's wrong with computing in general is yeah. that instead of doing what they be best for their users and the customers, they do right. what's good for business. And it's this tension: right. how far can we push what's good for our business without pushing away customers? But it's always well, going to be for what's good for this, business. This default browser thing we were just talking about is an example of, I think, Microsoft reaching a little too far yeah. in that direction. Yeah. There was a lot of negative feedback. And it was really hard to justify. Well, I, I'm sorry, you're sending my grandmother into an interface where she has to know which <laughs> ones of these things to change. Are you kidding me? Like, that's, it, it's so indefensible. Um, so they, you know, they stepped back from the cliff. They didn't. Computing would be so different. In yeah. a world where companies just said, you know, Jeff Bezos' false mantra, you know, customer-centric. If they sure. just said, look, we're just going to do what's right for the customer every single time. <laughs> um, I think computing would be a different experience. It's such a good story because they all do say that. Yeah, they all they lie. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, for well, instance, messaging would be unified. Great. All messaging would talk to all other messaging. Yeah. No, but Leo, it's better for Apple's customer if all un messaging is not unified. Yeah. Because no one who uses Apple products has friends that don't use Apple products. Right. So why would <laughs> you ever? That's such a crazy, how can you, you ever use justify Android? Android? Why would you, you ever? Know, it's insane. It's, it's insane. <laughs> so, I mean, there is this kind of, um, and it's completely a bogus ut utopian vision, but there's this kind of notion of, and, it, and yeah. you know why it persists is because people like you and me, Paul, are old enough to remember a day when computing was a hobbyist thing, not a business thing, it didn't last very long. But at that, at that point, it was very exciting and interesting, and you felt like uh, you know we were working yeah. together. And uh, and then you know AOL came along, and I just got into this with the you know this idiot who you left OnePlus and created this company called what, Nothing. Is oh, yeah. nothing. Is, Car is hey, nothing. Pay. Like yeah. it's like. Remember when the smartphone industry used to be exciting? Yeah, I do. But now I know that it's like the most common used personal computing device for the entire planet. Yeah. So it's not really exciting. Can, we can't handle exciting anymore. Yeah. Like it's not exciting now. It's just like n necessary. You know. Utilitarian. If you, well, yeah. If, if you want to be exciting, move on to the next thing. And yeah. by the way, while you're doing it, stop pretending you're Steve Jobs. Nobody cares. I, I just. <laughs> This this is the divide between enthusiasts and um, you know normal people. It's like I just want it to yeah. be cool. Well, that's neat. Yeah. I just want to get my job done, and then I want to go have dinner. Yeah. Like I, you know, and this is actually the problem with this Microsoft stuff because unfortunately, they've stepped over the other edge of it. They're not trying to make it cool. They have this business initiative to drive people to the services and other products, right. and it's getting in the way of these. It's user very experience. simple. It's very simple. Yeah. Um, I wish they wouldn't, you know, kind of. 
misrepresented as being c customer centric, but yeah. you know, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. I don't expect them to be customer centric. They're they're, they're stakeholder centric. <laughs> I, kind of I, I wish they I wish they were, but well, yeah. they're stakeholder centric. That's that's how yeah. the world is. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, driver block list. I, that's interesting. What is that? Yeah, no idea. This, so this <laughs> seemed more interesting at the time when I was writing it than it ended up being. <laughs> oh, life. What a yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there, there's a guy at Microsoft who's very active on Twitter, who is the vice president of OS security. His name is David Weston. He, he's very active on Twitter. So over the weekend, he tweets about this thing like it's brand new, right? And he said, we've got a new window security option. It's this new block list that lets you include vulnerable drivers. So if you turn this on, it'll automatically block things that we think are going to be problematic drivers. Well, that's good. So everybody... Yeah, everybody get excited. Everybody's like, yeah. oh, man, this sounds really good, right? Like, uh, there are people who are, are worried about it, too, saying, like, what if you accidentally mark something as vulnerable that's not, and I need it to turn my system on, blah, 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 right? Uh, but if people are pretty excited because they're like, that's a good idea. Like, Microsoft maintains this list of block drivers that they say there's known security vulnerabilities, there's... You know, they've been known to work with signed malware, like a whole list of things that you're like, yeah, that sounds great. So I went to Microsoft. I'm like, okay, so when are you guys going to have this? They're like, oh, it's already in the product. It's already there. Or, and they said it's already in Windows 10, Windows 11, and Windows we've Server had that for 2016 years. or later. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, forever. we've had it for years. Yeah. It's not new. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? Yeah. So I actually, I was like, let me see if this is there. So I went into Windows 11 Home on my Surface Laptop 3, and I did all the steps that they said show. And I'm like, yeah, it is there. It's there. But when I tried to turn it on, it, sh it put my Western digital driver in the list of things oh, they were going to block. No. And so then they were just like, no, we're not going to do that. No. And I'm like, oh, so it's there, but it doesn't really work because it's marking things that you need to compute, like to actually use yeah, your that's laptop. Not good. Right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, oh, so it God. doesn't really, it's not really the thing that you think it is. It sounds good. It's a hard thing good. to do well, but it I think, would be a nice yeah. security feature. It's yeah. there, but it doesn't work would be a great name for a book about Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what it's you there, want but is, it's is not ready, something maybe? like <laughs> firewall rules where you would say, yeah. I have rules. No NVIDIA driver older than, you know, this. No no third-party drivers for this, yeah. that kind of thing. And uh, yeah. But that's a little geeky and complicated. But that would be yeah. a nice feature. I think the idea is good. The implementation may be not so good yet. Um, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got our it hopes up, fine if it was in a control panel, you know. Yeah. 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 It's probably way too complicated and geeky. I think it would be really hard to pull this off, right? Yeah. I, even though they say they're working with OEMs to make sure with them that the things that are on the list should be on the list. I'm sure this list is going to change. But false constantly. positives will kill you every time. Yeah, right, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, yeah. Too, that's, that's too big of a failure if you're suddenly, you're, oh, my hard drive doesn't yeah. work anymore. I, and how do I oh, fix yeah, that? I can't do anything now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do I do? Yeah. 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 So I think I think maybe they're going to keep working on this, but it like it physically is there. Like yeah. you can see, it's the capability is there in Windows 10, 11, yeah. Server 2016, and higher. But I don't think it's working the way they would hope. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. The Microsoft Nothing motto. to see here yet. Steve Gibson <laughs> will look at this and decide. Actually, yeah, I will. Ref <laughs> I'll I'll tell Steve about it because I yeah. think he'll be interested. Because yeah. uh, in theory, that is an important thing to fix. Definitely. To protect. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Hey, it's another build. I'm excited. Are you guys going to go? What's going on with build? Are we going to go? <laughs> yeah, I'll be right here. Uh, <laughs> Is it virtual Watching again? It? Yeah. yeah, I guess it would again. be. This might be the last virtual one, though, right? Maybe. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Hope That's so. one. 24th, 26th. One May. conference you want to have in person developers. Two years from now, we're going to be like, hey, remember when we thought we were going to have in person? Oh, yeah, again? you're right. That's <laughs> true. How many boosters in are you now? 18. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah, and you gotta yeah, if you're Microsoft money. and any tech vendor, you've got to be kind of weighing this. You're like, wait, we're saving a ton of money by not having in-person events because um, we're not flying our people there. We're not running out conference centers. We're not having to get That's meals, right. right? And we can say that we have 
so many more thousands of attendees because people are signing up virtually, whether they actually watch it or not, they're signed up. So if you're just looking from a dollars and cents perspective, you're like, yeah, why should we do in-person events, right? Because <laughs> I, don't, I think you- I know. You can't beat in person, you know, in some cases. There's ways Microsoft could save money, but I think, I think yeah. they're just going to go. I think they will go back and have hybrid events and we'll- I do we'll, too. Same. We'll be in San Francisco or Orlando, God yeah. help us, or wherever. Yeah. Uh, and some people will be watching on the web, you know. Agree. Agree. I, I think, think that's, that's the future of all these events. I, I do yeah. agree. And I think they'll be yes. smaller when they come back, right? Like they're not going to yeah. bring Ignite back with like 30,000 people, right? Like well, especially not, not when, so, when they say, hey, by the way, you can attend all the sessions from the comfort of your yeah. own home. You know, a lot of people are going to go to their boss with their hat in their hand and say, hey, I'd really like to travel to Orlando or Vegas, wherever it is. And their boss is going to yeah. say, hey, I have an idea. Why don't you travel to your bedroom and you can watch it from there? And uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just I'll just keep paying you the normal amount because there's no reason yeah. to pay for the flight and the hotel and the meals right. and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's going to happen to a lot of people. So maybe a hybrid, yeah, then, so. you know, uh, yeah, hybrid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the way to I do think it, that's I think. what they'll do. Yeah. That's what they'll do going yep. for it. Although that's what the Google's next event doing, although it's dumb yeah. because it's only like Googlers that get to go. Yeah, theirs isn't really like a true hybrid. No. Yeah. Right? Well, but maybe that changed. This is you know, this is their first step back, yeah. right? So you're saying it Google I.O. is, is going to be Googlers in the audience. Yeah. And there, it's They say yeah. it's hybrid, but the li very limited list of people who can be there. Listen, all the Google employees are going to be on hand to answer any of your questions. I mean, you won't be there, but <laughs> you know, but they, they'll be there. <laughs> wave, wave it. No, like, <laughs> yeah. My, I mean, yeah. Build is going to have the Microsoft people presenting in one place. Like they're going to be there presenting, yeah. even if so we're not So that's good there, for them. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Microsoft <laughs> folks have traveled and done little events here and there. I mean, yeah. that's happened. So There are upsides. Yep. I mean, remember, you used to have to have lotteries because so many people yeah. wanted to come and they couldn't all that's come. Right. And right. So this way, everybody right. who wants to or can in the world. Lotteries at a company, right? We can only afford to send yeah. five people. You know, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, you could watch the sessions later or whatever. You're not going to interact with the people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what, you know, but now I, I we have the... You know, we have the technology, just like the six yeah. million dollar man. <laughs> well, so here's what, here's what we know. So, builds virtual, right? Inspire, yeah. which is their giant partner conference where people come from all over the world, it's supposed to be in Vegas this year in July. Not happening. It's virtual, also completely virtual. Um, mm -hmm. The next one we don't know about is is Fall Ignite, right? Like, there's going to be a Fall Ignite. Um, yeah. we don't know if it'll be in person, hybrid, virtual. We don't know. We don't, it's usually around like November, November around that yeah. time frame, Right. So that, that one, we don't know yet, but Microsoft employees and managers are out going to third party events in person. Like they're just That's not right. holding their own first party events in person. Cause who wants to be the first big company to say, yeah, we had 30,000 people there and it was a super spreader event, right? You don't, that's not the yep. publicity. You thought the other Microsoft yeah. virus was a bad, let me tell you about a, <laughs> wow, that's a good point. Right? Although, uh, <laughs> well, they had Mobile World eventually. Congress was real, right? I mean, yes, it yeah. wasn't CS, CS was too. CES right? was, it was much reduced, yeah. but it was But in almost person. nobody went to yeah. those Yeah, things, everybody right? was nervous. And the people who did, you're like, why are you going to what this? What are you right? doing? I know, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wanted not to be that person, but some people I know went to each of those events and I was had to bite my yeah. tongue, like, are you serious? You know? Yeah. Um, but there is this, well... I don't. That, this is completely separate from what we're talking about. But there is this kind of sense that maybe we, now that we're all, you know, most of us vaccinated, maybe we're overblowing yeah. the risks or the concerns. Maybe it's okay if we kind of go back well, to normal, having had the shots, and we'll maybe we'll get. That would sick. be true if the virus, if the pandemic was over. <laughs> Well, right. even if it's the not problem. over, it's never going to, it's always no, because going to be endemic. No, because there be variants that are even more deadly yeah. than what we've had before. But we right? don't, so, yeah, but not yet. Not in the U.S. No, yet. Not yet. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't yeah, know. I, I mean, I feel like maybe I, I've just been a chicken. Right. Yeah. There are going to be people that never go to an event again because of what happened. There's there no are. doubt about it. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there's <laughs> no doubt about it. And, I, and I'm not, I would never. Yeah. Criticize a person. Absolutely not. No. Like completely Absolutely no. not. Many of us People are, are immune, are immune choices, compromised right? or we have yeah. uh, yes. comorbidities yep. that really mean that it would be a very bad thing. Right. I, We're not going to take that chance. I desperately want to go to something. I, I, I wasn't going to go to Vegas <laughs> for any event. Yeah. Like that, that's not yeah. where I would I think go. South by, I heard rumors might have been a super spreader event. Um, yeah, I, I heard some that. things about that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if the jury's still out on that one, but yeah. um, 
You know, it'd be cool. Yeah. Lots of small events, like in yeah. big cities across the U.S. Like, you know, yeah. like not just well, like everybody watches in a movie theater somewhere, but like you know, like in New York. Say they had an event for Build in New York and they said, OK, right. 500 people. Right. They've done this in the past. So um, Build and Ignite, they've done traveling roadshows of different sizes across yeah. the United States, yeah, across right. the world, mm -hmm. where the, mm -hmm. the key presenters actually travel to these cities. So let's say, you know, some number of cities across the United States, some number of cities in mm -hmm. Europe, you, you know, Asia, whatever. You get to go out, you get to interact with these people. It's smaller audiences. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that should be part of this hybrid approach as well. Yeah, uh, to give people the uh, that opportunity, go to a local Microsoft, mm -hmm. you know, field office or wherever it is, or mm -hmm. uh, a smaller venue locally in a big right. city. Yep. Of the hundred thousand people who went to Austin for South by, uh, about a hundred COVID nineteen cases have been traced to the event, according mm -hmm. to the Austin uh, County Health mm -hmm. Authority. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I mean, <laughs> one in a thousand. That's not so bad. <laughs> well, yeah. unless you were one of the one of the unless you're the one, one of the thousand. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. you know, hospitalizations uh, did not spike. Yeah, appreciably. Oh, right. that's, well, that's the thing. So the the big thing now is this most recent, uh, well, re most recent to date um, variant wasn't as serious for people who were vaccinated, right. especially. Well, and and they and they did say you have to be vaccinated at South by. Well, there you mm -hmm. go. Um, I mean, a cruise ship just came back where they had ex it was all uh, vaccinated people, right? And there were a dozen or more people right. got COVID. You know, well, we'll and find out in vaccinated. July, won't we, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right. Uh, You'll I'll be, be the, the guy experimental the boat. Bunny suit. <laughs> but but yeah. uh, you know, we've lived two years where I know COVID was like oh, you know, code red. Yeah. But we are entering a period now where COVID is more like, well, you, you know, you got the flu. You're going to be sick. You're not going to like it. Uh, <laughs> so mm. in the spirit of I'm not a scientist, I'm just asking questions, yes. which is the dumbest freaking thing anyone's yes. ever said. I'm just, I'm just asking uh, questions. I, I, well, the one thing I do wonder about this kind of thing is we've spent a couple of years in isolation or near isolation, right? Mm. And now we're going to. I mean, are we less immune to things? Like, are we more mm. prone to get yeah, sick? Yeah, we're all going to get like, sicker. Yeah, we're all going to get you know, the flu now. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Get like, your just flu shot. Around, I, people I, people I, I get around me have gotten cold really sick. Just from, yeah, from just other from things. Being out, yeah, because yeah. we had I no go immunity. to a restaurant and I'm like, you feel that in your throat or is that? You know, the other one is <laughs> you know? we've also, there's a psychological impact. After two years, yeah. we are, we've yeah. kind of, it's amazing how quickly your veneer of civilization can run off, run off. <laughs> oh my god! So of course, you know, you go to the movies and people are insane. They're throwing yeah. stuff. You know, I right. mean, um, yeah. people yeah. people are acting funny, and I think yeah. it's because they they haven't been around other people much yeah. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't know how to interact in the public. <laughs> yeah, it's it just shows sure you it's oh, a yeah. very thin varnish. Yep. Civilization. Well, when you when you hear about the the melee that breaks out in the press room at Microsoft Ignite this year, you can, oh yeah, you we'll can know. bet your dollar that I, I was involved in it in some we'll way. Know. Yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Throck got yeah. out of the house. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. And yet, I think we do crave this kind of, you know, sure. it's so nice to go to a build, right? But yeah, you know what's different? I feel like, you know, like when we're watching it at home, you kind of half pay attention, right? Like you're like, oh, let me get a snack. Oh, wait, I got to answer some email. It's not when you're the at the event, yeah. when yeah. you're at the event crammed into that little space that we get to, and you're all typing next to each other, you've got to pay attention. All wearing our stupid penguin hats. <laughs> exactly. That happened. Um, but yeah, it, it feels like you, yeah. you just have to be way more focused, right? <laughs> well, you don't have to be focused because especially in our case, well, then we're going to leave and go have meetings with these people. Right. right. And right. and what you can't do is say, hey, it was kind of... I wasn't really paying wasn't attention. Really paying I was attention. doom scrolling while you were <laughs> talking on stage. Could you maybe give me a little yeah. recap there? Yeah. You know, yeah, you have yeah. to pay attention. Yeah. Do we even know how to pay and attention? seeing these things. Two years. No, and, and especially ones where there's hardware or a demo, like seeing it mm -hmm. in person makes a huge difference, right? It really right. does. That's right. Absolutely yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling Mary Jo, I'm going to go to a PC Maker in-person event for the first time since, wow. I believe, I want to say December 2019. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, is that right? Yeah, 2019. Yeah. It seems like so long ago. Wow. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah, two and a half yeah. years. Yeah. We, we, you know, we live in interesting times. What can we say? <laughs> you know, but that's not, a, that's not a good thing, Leo. No, you know, it's like a Chinese when, curse, when, when my wife, the, she went on a road trip to Boston last weekend, 
And I said, uh, hey, anything going on? And she said, no. And I said, perfect. I don't yeah, want to hear anything. Good news. What I want to hear is yeah. nothing happened. Nothing. <laughs> you yeah. know? I drove there. I came back. Yep. Yep. No. And then she, what she doesn't say is, oh, no, it was really interesting. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, here we go. Yeah. You're right. I had to call uh, AAA, you know. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, it's funny. I, I don't know if other people are noticing it, but I have just really noticed that everything and the stress levels are much higher. There's a lot oh, of yeah. tension, uh, interactions. <laughs> oh, giant animals are appearing. Giant and cats. Taking over. And <laughs> I think honestly, uh, your, your frame rate went down quite a bit about five minutes ago. Was Sirachi sleeping on the vents again? Yes, he was. Yeah. He had to move this over yeah, here. It gets hot. <laughs> yeah. We actually noticed it. Yeah. I saw the. It yeah. was so hot. My laptop, I'm like, I don't even know if I can touch it. It was so hot. <laughs> so, so interesting. So, Sirachi is a great way to test throttling in laptops. We yes, you got to get is. like a stand. You can sit that in so it's vertical, you know? Yeah, so, so, he, won't, so he won't be able yeah. to get on well, it. He, yeah. uh, what, that's why he likes it. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. It's like my eight sleep totally bed. It. It's hot. <laughs> no, I'm like yeah. picking him up off it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a little time out. Pause for station identification. You're listening to Windows Weekly, Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Time to talk business. <laughs> it's business time. Uh, Microsoft is still using bribes to get contact contracts. You know, it's funny. We get training uh, from, I work, um, the radio show is owned by uh, <laughs> iHeart. training on how not to get bribes? We get training <laughs> from iHeart. Uh, and because these trainings are for everybody oh, and it's a global yeah. organization, oh, what, what's a, what's a gr they call them grease payments. Should you ever pay grease payments? Ding. Well, you do. No. Okay, but you, okay you, you, you do work in the payola industry, Leo. Well, yeah. I mean, it's partly payola, yeah. but it's also like the examples they give, you know, the customs official says your shipment can be expedited <laughs> for a small payment of 100 dirhams. Is that... Okay, ding. I don't ever. I need to get greased more. I never get <laughs> more <any> grease payments. <laughs> so it's you know. I mean, it's uh, really all the big it's a federal. Have this, it's a federal right? like, offense, yes, and it's it's yes. very yeah. illegal. Yeah, and we all, all get this training. For Absolutely, this. Practices yeah. Act. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah. Microsoft has been found to um, have violated this in the past. Brad Smith came out with a very strongly worded denouncement of this practice, so they would never do this again. They are, in fact, still working with the contractor in Hungary that they uh, had bribe and kickback schemes with uh, yeah. in the past. Because it's, uh, so because, and this is why it's difficult. In the U.S., it's illegal. In many countries, yeah. it's expected. Right. Yeah. And you're a representative for a U.S. Con company in Hungary, yeah. and you, what do you do? This is like anything else yeah. uh, legal or business practice related. You're dealing with companies that are going through the same things you are. and It's hard. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. Put it on any. And it's like, you know, it's like riding a bike. Let's be honest. Um, well, that's year. why they give us this training every year. <laughs> I have to sit through <laughs> yeah. these terrible flash yeah. slideshows yeah. about yeah. all this stuff. But but they do it every year. Uh, they may have a legal obligation to do it. I wouldn't be surprised. But also because they really don't want to. Yeah. iHeart does not want to get caught doing that. Right. 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 Well, yeah, so a, a, a former Microsoft employee is claiming that Microsoft is still behaving in this fashion uh, throughout the world, uh, parts of the Middle East, Africa, mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, a minimum of $200 million each year goes to Microsoft employees, partners, and government employees for bribes. $200? Six, that's a pretty small bribe. 200, 200 million. Mm -hmm. Oh, million. <laughs> okay. 67% um, <laughs> oh. of the company's salespeople oh. <laughs> uh, and managers are receiving these payments. Um Government officials in Ghana, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Qatar. Yeah, right. those are all places they expect it. Saudi Arabia. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the deal. Yeah. You get off the airplane in Egypt if you want to use... your hand, though, too. Well, <laughs> like, I know. They're right? not good places. You get off the plane in Egypt and you go to the bathroom, there's a guy mm -hmm. standing at the door saying, you have to pay me for the toilet paper. Right. That's not exactly a grease payment, but still. <laughs> well, it's... it's <laughs> I don't know. We'll stop right there. Stop right there. There's, there's so many, um, so many things yeah, one sure. could say, but I don't want to yeah, get slapped. Let's not. Let's not. <laughs> uh, so, what are they going to do about it? Uh, um, Manios limpios. Um, <laughs> what are they going to do about it? I don't know. So a strongly right now worded charge. memo. That's what they're. Yeah, going to do. it's there'll exactly. be more training. 
Yeah. Yeah, Morgan <laughs> Well, the interesting, yeah. I, the interesting thing about this is this guy, this person has gone to the U.S. Department of Justice, the Security, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, and has reported this, and they have done nothing. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now- Oh, so this is a whistleblower. Ah, yeah. 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 interesting. Who yeah. used to work at Microsoft, right. who doesn't right. anymore. Yep, yep. <laughs> Well, that's the problem, I think, is that it's one of those things that everybody knows it's going on and everybody yeah. kind of turns a blind eye because right. Mm -hmm. if you're going to do business in yeah. Cotter, um, yep, you know, got to grease the wheel, got to grease the wheels. <laughs> um, so we've been talking a lot about the um, yeah. new EU rules. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's not yet approved. And then there's six months before it goes into effect to give companies time to rewrite all their software. Because sure. uh, that's, that's what all it will take. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a minor, yeah. minor change. Yeah. It's going to require you to rewrite everything. Um, Google, obviously, and Apple, obviously, impacted Microsoft. Well, that's the question. That's why I wanted to bring this up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious where you guys kind of stand on this. I, the, the issue here is you have to be of a certain market capitalization, which Microsoft absolutely yeah. is. Uh, yeah. You have to be considered a gate a gatekeeper, and examples of gatekeepers are uh, companies that offer services like web browsers, messaging apps, social media platforms. You notice the language there is really Apple, Google, Facebook, yeah. Amazon. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I mean, I I I feel like Microsoft. I think they're going to go after the big fish first, but I don't see any reason why Microsoft wouldn't f run a follow this. Agree. <laughs> this, yeah. is my, this is my personal take. But. So they'll have you know to what? address it. They've been so it. lucky. They've been like stepping around all the big tech, anti-big tech sentiments and, yeah. and lawsuits, right. yeah. you know? Yeah. But that's not going to last forever, right? I mean, <laughs> at some point somebody's going to go, wait a minute, they're not part of FANG, but Microsoft, like they're kind of a big deal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they yeah. are a gatekeeper, so right? I mean, the operating system makes them a gatekeeper, the kinds of stuff they're doing with Edge makes them a gatekeeper, right? Um, they're in all these right. markets. Yeah. I think they are not going to be immune from this. There's yeah. no way they can be immune. Yeah, and there's also, you know, <laughs> Microsoft might want to uh, get this Activision thing done before this happens too because companies that don't comply with this will be banned from acquiring yeah. other companies, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Which is That's a big one, yeah. That's actually a yeah. big that one. That is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the fines yeah. are Act massive. The Activision thing, right? Like, the Activision's in so much trouble legally, and, like, now their employees want to unionize, and Microsoft's like, yeah, if you want to, go ahead, right? Um, <laughs> they're just probably like, hurry up and let us get this done before they find exactly. Activision has done something really bad, and they're going to go after us because of Activision, right? Hopefully Activision doesn't pull a Nokia and stop doing anything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, now that they know yeah. Microsoft's just going to bail them out. Um, yeah. That was a big yeah. problem. It, it, Microsoft seems so willing to compromise on anything to make this happen. Yeah. Uh, I hope they don't run afoul of that. Uh, but I guess yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, I thought this was kind of it's interesting. It's not, yeah, tonight. it's not a law yet. And there, you know, I'm sure there's this right. intense lobbying going on. Speaking of grease and payments, everything moves yeah, slowly. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So it's not going to happen overnight. You, you, you may not bribe a customs inspector, but parliamentarians, <laughs> and EU legislators, oh God, commissioners, yep. they're fine. Mm -hmm. They're fine. The laws yep. allow for a certain amount. It could happen yep. in Switzerland. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else to say before we dive deep into the Xbox segment? Oh God, are we already at Xbox? No. Yeah. Can you believe it? <laughs> Time flies when you're... Having a good time. I am so, I have to say, I, you know, so I was deciding whether I should put my Series X in the bedroom with the yeah. T, we have a TV, nice 4K TV there. And I decided, you know, it really belongs in my office next to my Mac Studio and my Linux box. Uh, I'm sure. going to put my, so it's all, it's actually quite a beautiful display with a little tower there on that 5K, 5, um, I mean, OLED 4K, OLED 55 inch monitor. It's great. Played a little Elden Ring. Got slaughtered in 4K. It was so much fun. Um, I'm excited. Now I'm wondering what right, games... Right, right. You've mentioned before, like Ori and the Breath of the Wind yeah, or whatever. Yeah, just for the quality of the graphics, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, sea of Thieves, which I really you know wanted to like when it came out, uh, has improved a lot, so I'm going to probably play that. Yep. No, Man's Land, uh, no Man's Sky. Um, mm -hmm. Not going to play Call of Duty. I'm not a big fan of uh, hairy shooters. 
Wait, hairy shoes? Hair, hairy in the sense you go in there and it's, you know, bullets are whizzing and you, you got Oh, that's eat. all I do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I know. You love that. That's and all I, I just do. don't have That's the, how I get my, my COVID era rage has yeah. been pouring out into college. I don't have the twitch uh, muscles yeah. or something oh, for that. So, um, Elden Ring is good because play, you can. Um, you should play through the single player campaign on Halo. Oh, yeah. Halo Infinite. I should probably get that, yeah. huh? Yep. Okay. I bought the Master Chief Collection back in the day, yep. but that didn't include Infinite. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea, Infinite. You like it? That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a shooter, but it's not a hairy shooter. It's the, no, no. <laughs> in the single, no, it can be any level you want it to be, hairy yeah. or not hairy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess I don't really think of it in those terms. But, um, it, it comes from, I don't know, I think it was Michael, some some kid I told me, yeah. told me, oh yeah, you know, you don't want to play Call of Duty. It's, you, you go in and it's immediately hairy. You're in a hairy situation. It is situation. a situation where there are a lot of people who know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. And if you don't, yeah, you, you, it's not going to be yeah, kind. Headshot dead. That's it. It's like three seconds and it's over. Yeah. So. Um, no, Halo is a good choice. It's probably the best Halo game since Halo 3, good. I would say. I liked so Halo. I played that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the first the first three I played. It's fun. It's a little weird Maybe. playing a game sitting at a desk, though. That's the only I negative. I do it every day, Leo. <laughs> is that, so, you, so that's a good you're, question. Yeah. You're, so if you're I Xbox, rotate to my is left. Is it a desk? I, a, I feel like it should be a living room display. experience. Yeah, it probably is for younger people, but I like to pretend I'm working. And <laughs> there you go, there you go. If anything important happens, I'm right here. You know, it's nice. One big monitor, and I've got Linux, Mac, and Xbox on it. It's great. I'm happy, and Windows too, yeah. actually. So there it's a, it's a, like everything is there. You know, it's good. You have, you don't have Game Pass, do you? I had it, and I canceled it because I never play any games. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking for me, I thought at first Game oh. Pass would be perfect because I could dip into you know a little bit here and there. I'm thinking maybe I'll just buy the games I want. I think I mentioned this last week, but you got to check out um, Flight Simulator. Oh, Flight Sim. See, that seems like kind of boring. Like, Leo, listen, mm, you can have Harry or non Harry. I don't know. That's like <laughs> that's the exact opposite. If you want boring or not boring, try to fly that thing under the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. I never did okay. That okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that'll be fun. And um, oh, Red Dead Redemption Two, which I had already started. I think I'll keep that on there. That looks pretty fun. So. Okay. Cowboy. Cowboys and Indians. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So anyway, let's do some Xboxing. Let's let us. Um, it's almost April. When's April first? Like Friday, probably Friday, Saturday. Tomorrow. Um, it, no, maybe tomorrow. not. Maybe day after tomorrow. Yeah, Friday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Microsoft has announced the games that are coming uh, to Xbox uh, Game Pass Ultimate and Xbox Live Gold subscribers. For the month of April, once again, you know, nothing super exciting to me. We're almost getting to the point now where, like, giving away Xbox 360 games, I think maybe we need to move past that. But yeah, you get two of those a month, and then you get two more modern games, which the, they never the, really call which, up. But which you don't want to play. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't, I actually don't recognize any of these games, Outpost, to be <laughs> Outpost Kaloki X. Ooh. I know, I know. Ooh. Looks like the uh, some kind of Adams Family thing. I don't know what that is. <laughs> So anyway, whatever. It's a, it's a perk of your subscription. You should at least look into it. Who knows? Yeah. Um, the bigger, the biggest news this week to me is, although it's also the <laughs> most lackluster news in retrospect, is we have known for years that Sony was going to do something along the lines of Xbox Game. Uh, I'm sorry, Xbox Cloud Gaming, which is the game streaming service that Microsoft has. My, uh, Sony in the past, I'm not an expert on the PlayStation stuff, but Sony to date has had something called uh, PlayStation Plus, which is basically Xbox Live Gold, right? It's multiplayer and some other stuff related to that kind of thing. Uh, they give you a couple of free games a month. I just mentioned Xbox uh, Games with Gold. They have a similar program. Where I think you got two games a month. Uh, and then they've had something called X, uh, PlayStation Now. And that's where I'm a little hazy. I, I, I think PlayStation Now might have had streaming and download uh, capabilities. The systems it ran on, the games it offered have, have changed over time. But we know they want to do like a cloud gaming competitor. They might be doing it at least partially on Azure, which I've not heard anything about. But this week they finally announced what they're doing. And it's like, eh, it's not that exciting. So this uh, they're rejiggering the branding and everything. So it's all PlayStation Plus now. PlayStation Plus Essential is what PlayStation Plus used to be. Nine ninety nine a month or sixty dollars a year. It's the basic tier. It gives you the two free games I mentioned, the online multiplayer, et cetera, et cetera. There's really not a lot going on there. 
there's a new thing called PlayStation Plus Extra, which is $14.99 a month or $100 a year. This is everything from PS Plus Essential. Plus an access to a catalog of 400 PS4 and PS5 games. Now, this is Game Pass, right? But for PlayStation. So they're very specifically keeping it to the most two most recent generations of, of uh, consoles. And uh, they don't really say this, but that you you will download these games, right? So if you subscribe to this, you want to play these games, you download them to your console, you go from there. And then the, the Xbox Cloud Gaming competitor is something called PlayStation Plus Premium. This is going to be $18 a month or $120 a year. This is everything from the other two tiers. Plus access to 340 additional OG PlayStation, PS2, PSP, which is the you know the portable thing, and PS3 games via cloud streaming and downloads, except for the PS3 games, which I think are download only. I don't I don't know what's going on there. Uh, actually, I think they're streaming only, and then some limited times trials. So this is not what we were looking for, right? This is not exactly. This is not what Microsoft is doing in many ways, right? They're, Microsoft's cloud streaming service is new games. It's not old games. Well, this is probably some old games, but it's mostly, it's like new games. They are very specifically only offering legacy games for streaming, which I think is kind of weird. So, I don't know. <laughs> like, this is not the big bang uh, announcement I was kind of expecting here. The other thing is, this is not happening very quickly. Like, this is going to load up, uh, I'm sorry, started... Asian markets in June, and then we won't see it here in North America or in Europe and other markets until the end of the year. And I'm thinking they're probably going to bulk up the uh, the different game titles that are available everywhere. So for right now, not super exciting. Waited and waited and waited to hear what they were doing, and it was like, I okay, <laughs> like whatever. It just doesn't seem that interesting to me, unfortunately. But if you're a PlayStation guy, yeah, well, you know, they got to have something too. Yes, I yeah, I absolutely. Um, let's see. So, uh, Mike oh, Leo Descott is Xbox Series X finally, um, and of course, immediately but, after I bought it, <laughs> I know they're starting to sell. My, they Microsoft is starting to sell refurbished consoles <laughs> through their online store in the U.S. Oh. and the U.K. <laughs> so, how much was the? They're really not that much cheaper though. Like your console, was it? It's five hundred dollars. Yeah, five fifty. Yeah, yeah. Five fifty. Yeah. So four sixty nine ninety nine. Yeah, it's not that much cheaper. Um, yeah, that's not great. I mean, I, I presume because you're getting it from Microsoft, refurbished is as good as new. <laughs> no? Well, let's ask uh, Mary Jo what she thinks of her new Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. I, well, yeah, I presumably, yeah, I, I hope so. I've never bought anything refurbished from Microsoft. I bought a lot of refurbished Apple products. Those were always great. Um, they do have a one-year warranty. Um, yeah, I think it's probably, in many cases, it's uh, something that was open box and returned. Yep. And, yep. And I will they, say this. You, we have never heard anything about reliability issues with these new consoles. Yeah, right? no fact, red ring of death. Yeah. I don't think we had any issues no. the whole Xbox One time frame no. either. So that cooling uh, they, tower is a good sign. That's right. Yeah. Even the S. I mean, it's this beautiful little thing, but mm -hmm. you could you could cook an egg on this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, they seem they seem to have uh, figured that out. So that's that's an option, I guess, if you're having trouble finding that stuff. I wonder if I should get um, Game Pass again. I, you know, one thing that's annoying is you so, can't play online games without some sort of game right. gold. Yeah, pass you need game. Yeah, you need Game Pass or Xbox. Uh, so like even an Elden games, Ring, which like I bought, Live Gold. Yeah, I can't yep. play online unless I have Xbox Live. So this literally dates back to 2002, like when Microsoft was like, we well, need to make a subscription service. What's that going to be? Literally, it amounted to multiplayer online. <laughs> okay. Like that's the, the okay. that's the key benefit, right? And Sony does the same thing. Um, so Actually, you can pay don't, $60. I don't mind that much not well, having other people yeah. in my game. I mean, you would, obviously. You don't, you <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much rely on it. Yeah. Um, like for Elden Ring, them. it's kind of annoying because you see these ghosts of other players... And then okay. there's all these messages that are just basically trashing the place, because me wow. you can a player can leave a message. The theory being there's a secret door here, but more often sure. than not, they're really leaving. it's like <laughs> jump off here, it's okay, and then you jump off and you die. So <laughs> it's a lot of griefing and stuff. So uh, it's I don't um, miss that. The Xbox Live is a toxic environment, Leo. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. So maybe I don't need the Xbox Live. Pass. Well, if you don't want to play multiplayer, you don't need it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah right. But the the advantage to Game Pass, obviously, though, is you get that whole library of things you can experiment with. Right. And if you have Ultimate, 
you can stream a big portion of them too, which lets you play them without even downloading them. That's so. right. There is an advantage. And to that. Yeah. if you do, choose, if you say, look, I'm not going to keep this subscription or I played this game so much, I just want to buy it. You actually get a discount when you buy it if you have a Game Pass subscription right. too. So. so there's game, there's Xbox Live. That's the lowest tier. Right. But that's still oh, like yeah, 10 bucks a month, right? Or something? Yeah. $60 a year. Okay. You that's can get so Game bad. Pass Five bucks. just for console is $9.99 a month. Or probably nine. I guess it's nine. So that includes $99. Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. Is there a like Xbox right. Live Gold? Is there something in the middle? No. So okay, there's just well, two. Xbox Live Gold is technically. The, I think they just call it Xbox Live now, but that's the thing at the bottom. Okay. Sixty dollars a year. A Game Pass console or PC is nine ninety nine or hundred nine or hundred dollars a year. Okay. And then uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is for both and the cloud streaming. Uh huh. Fourteen ninety nine or one hundred and fifty dollars a year. Yeah, they should have taken my thirty-five bucks a month when I was offering it because I know you wanted that. that yeah, I wanted that deal, could, and yeah, now I'm yeah. like, man, eh, I think I'll just, I maybe I'll get the go back. I had I had had live I, for ten years or something. I just felt you're like a different kind of gamer it. than I am. Honestly, I, feel I am like a different most kind of gamer. Like you included, yeah. yeah, no, but I you would you should at least try it. You know, I'd do it for a month. And oh, I did. Oh, I had it for six months. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm, what I didn't have was an Xbox Series X. Right. right. <laughs> no, I've had it maybe for a year. I've had it for a long time, and I finally just said, "Why am I paying fifteen bucks a month for something I'm not using ever?" That's right. Yeah, but now you have the console. Maybe you will. Maybe I will now that I have the console. Yeah. And now that you've spent more money on a console, you have to spend more money in the service. It just makes oh. sense. Oh. It's basic finances, Leo. <sighs> so. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. Um, I'm I don't to take use another job just to pay for all this. I know. I know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I, uh, this is one of the news of the obvious. Uh, Microsoft has created a new cloud gaming organization inside of Xbox Game Studios, uh, specifically with the aim of creating, guess what, cloud gaming <laughs> titles, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. No surprise there. The cool thing there is the person running this business is the former lead designer of Portal. Oh. Uh, Ken, Ken oh, that's Swift, cool. Who, yeah. Did they acquire Bungie? Yeah, they did. Uh, that's they right. They acquired Bungie, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and that's what and they, they... So he joined Microsoft then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's... Ha there was nothing to announce there other than that, So that, but that's happening. And speaking of Flight Simulator, which we were earlier, um, they keep coming up with world updates. So like... Um, God, if the Sea of Thieves games you mentioned earlier, Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Um, they keep updating this game as well. And one of the big ways they updated is through these world updates which adds really detailed looking content for specific parts of the earth. Ooh, and look at that. The, yeah, the eighth one is the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain, oh. Portugal, Port Portugal, Portugal, Portugal. <laughs> but you could uh, fly yeah, by Gibraltar Gaudi's uh, cathedral. The, oh. And actually, if you fly by it in the game, it looks like it's finished. So it's coming. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, there's no scaffolds on it. There's no <laughs> scaffolds. I've never, I've never seen it look so beautiful I, it, in my life. I never realized that's what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. This is the cathedral that's <laughs> been I'm under construction. Sure it doesn't look like that. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, yeah. And it will be in const under construction after we're all dead. I yeah. think it's going to be yeah. a long time. But it's gorgeous. It. But it looks beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> neat. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, I'd love yeah. to fly by that. That's neat. Yeah. You have to fly by this one. You can't fly under it like the uh, Arctic, uh, the uh, Eiffel Tower. <laughs> you could try, but it, it. It, would, try, it wouldn't go well. It would go poorly. Uh, I like this kind of thing because there are certain cities, like Paris is one example, and Barcelona is an example, where I actually know my way around the city really well. So flying by, you know, these familiar sites, like I, 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 th I find that actually pretty enjoyable. So you buy this game, mm -hmm. <laughs> you sit at your desk, and then uh, you're flying an airplane. And, and really, uh, <laughs> I, I feel like you've immediately grasped <laughs> the exact and scenario. Then really, the, but for you, the point is like looking out the window. That's right. Yeah. Otherwise, That's there's right. not that much to do. Well, I, that is the thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, yeah. There, there are um, there are contests and, you know, goals and things like that. I mean, there's little okay. things. You but can it's kind of like Google Earth with wings. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. But, I'd be, you know, it'd be fun if you were going to be going to Madrid to fly right. over it first, maybe. And you and there I like a, to travel. Yeah. I think it was a Forza game very early on that was, uh, was took place in Paris, and I yeah, used to love that game fun. too. It wasn't as yeah. it wasn't as detailed, but you drive around, you're like, I know exactly how to drive right. around the city. You know? Right, that's cool. Yeah, yep. This is this is pretty neat. I have been to that stadium. Yeah, there's the, I the have been to that Sagrada Familia. <laughs> wow, yep. it's kind of neat. So, 
Yeah. And if right, you maybe I will get this. this. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, what plane do you fl- what do you fly, man? Oh, I just fly the, the most, the easiest one. Okay. <laughs> I don't need, because I don't, it's, for me, it's not. It's not about the fact, pedals and the metals oh. and, yeah. The, the problem with flight simulators was always, it was hard to take off and it was really hard to land. Right. And the rest of the and, time it was just boring. Yeah. So these days they cut off the hard stuff and they just leave the boring stuff, but they make it beautiful. Yeah. So you can go to No, I'll do this. This would be really fun. Yeah. 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 No, I like, Especially okay. You, you, talk you have a nice 4K set. It'd this be beautiful. Is, yeah. This will show it off nice. Yeah. Nice. These are. This is. I'm um, playing the video on on your website for. Yeah. Nice. And I. I. This is actually somewhere I would. I'll be going next year. So. It'd be nice to kind of yeah. see it. Yeah. Nice. Good. Can you do it? I could get a 747 though, right? I mean, it'd be kind of. I think there are. I don't know exactly. I, oh yeah, I, there's all kinds of plans. Yeah. 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 I'm sure there's all kinds of plans. Yeah. Nice. All right. Is there a third and party then, view like this where you're you're kind yes. of yes? Okay. You can do that. Yep. You You're not just looking through the window of the plane. You can you can be in the plane looking out standard view. You can be, fr- you know, the front view without any of the instrumentation. You can be like kind of next to it, around it. Like you can rotate around the plane. I kind of like this as a way of traveling, especially yeah. if you're about to go to this place or you've just been to this place. We're going to go to Lisbon next spring, so it'd be kind of in a year. Beautiful. So it'd be kind of yeah, cool. Lisbon is to- one of my favorite places yeah. in the world, and um, yeah, this is all very accurate. And the neat thing is when they do a world update like this, they've all of the famous places, like the ones you just saw in Lisbon there, have been really detailed, you know, rendered very de- in right. a detailed fashion. They look very realistic. It's nice. really, really nice. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> very cool. Have you seen the uh, Halo TV show yet? Is that... It, well, so here's the... Pro- <laughs> My tip is about the show, too. But, um, yeah, so there's only one episode available so far. I assume both of you guys have watched it repeatedly. Like uh, I oh, have. yeah. I, you know, um, I go every night. I just watch it over and over. Um, so are you folks familiar with The Mandalorian? Huh? The yes. Mandalorian. Yes. Yes. Including me, me and the folks here? <laughs> <laughs> All the geeks oh. love The Mandalorian. Not so, Surely not so you're much a Star me. Wars fan. Not Mark so Joe. much me. I, don't, I, watched, okay. I keep trying to watch the first episode. I never get through it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Actually, The Mandalorian gets pretty good. But over the two seasons they have, and then, of course, now they have this Boba Fett thing, the Book of Boba Fett or whatever it's called. I realized, you know, it's made the Star Wars world very small. I, I really like that there's a lot of, uh, they're making a lot of Star Wars content. Like I, I feel like this is something they sat on for a long time and they need to do more of it. It's good, but they're, they're all, fi- those three episodes or seasons or whatever are all filmed in exactly the same way. Like they, they make the show feel small and Halo, there are the, the sort of Battlestar Galactica style special effects scenes, which are awesome. And giant ships flying over giant structures and you can see into them it's all amazing looking but all the, like the live action stuff did they like rent the set from the mandalorian to make this thing like it looks it's like exactly the same place like it seems it's it seems small to me i know it's a tv show but <laughs> i don't know it just seems like the it's like they it's like the, someone saw the mandalorian you want something they were grander like, you want something yes. grander, right? I, you I, sound I, like you sound like Sunset oh Strip. It's the <laughs> movies that got small, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. I don't know. It, to it's, me, it's fine. I'm, I'm glad they're making it. It's. It, it's. I'm. I'm a little it's older. A parallel story. I'm a lot yeah. older than you guys, and You're not a lot I was an adult weird. when Star Wars came out, so yeah, I didn't no. get imprinted. Oh, Lisa loves the star. You know, she every Star Wars movie yeah. we go see in the theater, blah blah blah, and we get chills sure. when the John Williams theme comes up. And yeah, but I was break out into focus groups yeah. after the movie's over. I was in, I was in my twenties uh, <laughs> when it came out, so for me it was just kind of a bad kitty film, and I never got into it. And I'm I you know I'm I guess I'm one yeah. of those. Elitist this is going to be the thing that breaks us apart. I, I know. Tell. I'm one of those <laughs> jerks who uh, thinks um, that all this comic book stuff and all that. Oh, I, just, I don't like the comic book stuff at all. I think that's ludicrous. I just, I don't, I can't get into it. I, I know I want to. Even Star Trek doesn't really, you know, it's not like I would go, oh, I can't wait to see Star Trek. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Well, Okay, I can't help you with that, but I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. Um, I'm broken that way. I do. I understand that. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like one step above a COVID denial. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I will not. Um, I have freedom from Star Wars. The one thing I will, I will, this is a fan of this stuff. I don't, I don't appreciate the Star Wars versus Star Trek argument thing. I think both of those are great. I, I don't understand that. But I, but the comic book stuff, I couldn't care less about. This is just the same nonsense. Men in capes over and over and over again. I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if they don't have capes. Yeah, <laughs> spandex. Yeah, capes, spandex. Yeah, tights. Men in I tights. I also love, I have friends. These are like fully grown adults. It's like the type of people who like go to Disney World as adults and they still... It's, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, hey, it's that same have world, some friends, you know. We have some friends in no, the no, group. I know, I know. No, I don't understand it. Be I'm, careful. I'm, lots of people, and I'm not knocking it in any way, yep, it's just except I just choice. think you're kind of infantile. Okay? <laughs> just, I said it. Well... Yeah, I just don't. It's not for me. Uh, but I, I guess, I don't wear my fandom on a on my sleeve. Like I wouldn't dress up like Obi Wan Kenobi or, yeah, I understand. You know, whatever. I don't, yeah. I'm not going to carry on sure. a Captain American shield. I don't like that kind of stuff. At least not in public. Who knows what I do? In public. <laughs> but anyway, with regards to Halo, I I'm glad they're doing this. This is a story I always thought would make sense as a movie. But now that we have, like, really terrific, you know, TV series, long form stuff, I think it makes sense for this too. So. So far, you know, it's like uh, there's parts of it I love, and there's parts of it I'm like, oh, I don't know, you know. Uh, there is a hilarious scene, which actually I think was in one of the games, where he takes off his mask, which is one of the things that kind of, you know, what actually is one of the problems with the Mandalorian, right? You don't see, yeah, he's a great it's actor. kind of, yeah, you don't see him until so the people last, are pissed off that Master that Chief revealed his identity. Well, actually, it's but it's funny. You should that, that's it's that's a watching. good that's a good moment. Okay, it's 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 pretty good. Yeah. All right, I won't ruin it. I don't want to ruin that one. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I don't. It's hard to take you seriously. I can't put my finger on it. I got a crumpled ear. Um, I had an art teacher in uh, when I went to art school briefly who said, "I don't understand why anyone why no one takes me seriously." And I said, "I think it's the clown nose." <laughs> that's a good line. <laughs> Yeah, uh, especially since he didn't have one. Uh, <laughs> let us pause momentarily yeah. so you can throw things at me. <laughs> and uh, we yep. will, uh, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com, Therott.com. Having some fun on Windows Weekly, just joshing you. <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of the kiss of death to admit in a yep. group of geeks that you're not into Star Wars, I know. But, uh, oh, man. Hey, I just want to be honest. That's why I was... No, I used to be afraid you guys would have me do trivia shows like you used to do at Twit because I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I write about tech, but I don't yeah. know any of those geeky yeah, things right. you guys know. And I always feel like I need to hide it because I the feel red, like people are like, oh, you're no, not a no, real no, geek. No, no. We, want you, we <laughs> want you to be authentic. That's You know what I mean? Like people are yeah. like, wait, you've never, like, I, I'm like, have I even watched Star Wars? Like, I guess I, I like have. When I have like, friends who come to me and they say, Look, <laughs> listen, listen, you got to see this one. This is a comic book movie. But it's not like a comic book movie. Yeah, they, they always like, all right, right. I'll go watch it. They, they always watch it, say like, that it's a it's a right. freaking they comic always say book that. movie. They're John, comic John book who movies. loves this stuff, he says, "Oh no, but you're going to really love WandaVision." Yeah, you're just like, gonna, no. it's not a comic it's, book movie. <laughs> it's a co it is literally a comic yeah. book movie. Uh, Everyone has things they like and don't like. Peace, it's okay. Peacemaker, you're going to yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah, sure, he's a superhero, right. but it's not a comic book show. Okay, fine. No, now it's just a running gag. Like my friend's like, hey, do you want to go see the new Batman movie? I heard it wasn't like a comic book movie. <laughs> see, I got bad news for you, John. The guy's wearing a cowl and a cape. It's, I did uh, get imprinted when I was a kid by Superman and Batman because my dad was oh, a big DC God, comic yeah. fan. And yeah. so yeah. I did get, so I have a little more affinity for that mm -hmm. stuff, but not enough to say, you know, <laughs> they need to make more Batman movies. You know, that's what the world really needs. I think needs. they've made enough Batman movies. I think they've made too many Spider-Man movies. There, I said it. Let's just move on, folks. Uh, there are other stories. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you an, an interesting statistic. Spider-Man No Way Home grossed more money than all 10 of the top Oscar-nominated films. Yep. Put together. <laughs> easily, Put together. By the way, it was easily one-tenth as good as any of those movies. So that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And, I, you know, so there are directors like Scorsese and Ridley Scott who are saying, you know, sure. cinema might be dead because the only thing that's pulling people to movie theaters these days is somebody in tights with a cape. That's right. <laughs>
Right. Yeah. Right. So more and more of them are turning to TV, which is fine. Yeah. Because honestly, some of that stuff is fantastic. Right. <sighs> and I, you know what? I did like Black Panther. I liked it a lot. But it, I did too. I yeah. like that. See, too. there you and go. And I don't know. Yeah. So I didn't know nothing about the Marvel movies. You know, people well, like, like Joe, you see the little a, Easter egg in there. I'm right. like, I, guys, as a, I don't As know. a resident <laughs> of New York City, does it bother you how many times your city has destroyed these movies? <laughs> <laughs> like this hey, is, like, San Francisco's no, a close second. Can I tell no. you? It's a little plot of like Gotham every third always movie. rises again. <laughs> They're always That's blowing up Golden Gate Bridge. Why? <laughs> yeah, Gotham will always rise again. I like it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, let's pause okay. for a minute and then the back of the book. We will start our back of the book with Paul Therott. Any our tip of the week, sir? Yeah, so Microsoft has shepherded this Halo TV series to life. It's on Paramount Plus. They just renewed it, by the way, for season two. They did. Yes, uh, which yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you have an Xbox Game Pass subscription, or Xbox, it might be Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Actually, I think it's a, yeah. You get a month of Paramount Plus for free. What a, an amazing perk! So I thought to myself, I have. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. I will go to the site and get my free month, courtesy of Microsoft. Here's the thing. Everybody gets a free month of Paramount Plus. That's not a... You don't get an extra month. It's the same deal you get just by walking in off the street. So the problem with doing that is Microsoft's deal is only good through the end of May. But if you sign up for Paramount Plus at any time, you're going to get a month free. So if you want to watch Halo, wait till it's done. <laughs> then get your free Oh, then month binge it. Binge good thinking. Because... Right now, there's one episode out, and they're putting it out once a week like it's Archie Bunker in the 1970s. I have no idea why anyone would want to watch a TV show like that today. We but just wait. We do. just wait till they're all Yeah, I would done. never watch. Never. No. Nope. I just, we we waited. I, this is a total tangent. I'm sorry. We waited until Servant was done to watch the season Same thing. Three. Yep. I hated it. It's still a crap <laughs> show. Even oh if you watch God, it all it at terrible. once, it's a crap show. Oh, it was terrible. What a terrible show. So it's frustrating! I like, can't stand it, being terrible. But it had time. it had such promise. Like what it are was you doing. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That's my R two D two hat. Oh, it was like is you are you wearing a Patriots hat? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of, it is Patriots color, isn't it? Yeah, I'm told that That's the, an R2, I'm that told is, it's an R two D two hat. I don't know. So whoever did a blind person <laughs> stitch that together? What is going on? That doesn't look, look if you want to knit wait, something that looks like R two D two, wait, but bend your head down so I can see the top of it. Oh, oh I have to <laughs> rotate it. Burke is saying I'm not I'm not wearing it right. That is <laughs> that's no. There's nowhere that is no, not. It's got some like even like code an Atari twenty six hundred rendition. I may of be wrong. Look more like I may this may not. It is an R two D two hat, isn't it? Burke says yeah, it is. That's yeah. not that's not that's not good. Oh well, <laughs> that's not a good one. <laughs> Okay. Anywho, uh, <laughs> so I have two two epics sort of. Um, last week I talked about screenshots. I used the green shot, as you may recall, it's free. Uh, this week I was looking at screen recorders. This is where you make a video of whatever's happening on the screen with the mouse cursor and all that kind of stuff. Um, I found something called. Well, I found the only thing I think that's any good. It's called OBS Studio. Oh yeah, this is the best. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Absolutely. Uh, free, open source, etc. Works. Fantastically, it's excellent. Yeah, it's what I use to stream my uh, Valheim primetime games. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. yeah, it works great. Um, also, I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, a long time ago, um, I mentioned that I would be bringing the WPF uh, Windows Presentation Foundation version of Netpad to GitHub. Um, I kind of procrastinated on that originally just because I was all caught up in the stuff we were doing in Mexico and everything, but. I finally got in touch with Raphael and asked him if he would look it over first because I just want to make sure there's no obvious issues with it. Um, this one is much cleaner than the Windows Forum version and is my favorite version of the app. Um, so it is available on GitHub Yay. if you would like to What's your look GitHub at the source code. And handle? Throt. So just github.com slash throt, T-H-U-R-R-O-T. -R nice. There he is. This Good. is the one to get. This is, yeah, it's there a good one. There he is. And there's WFCS and there's WPF. You say yeah, you want the WPF. WPF is the new one. Is the new one. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you do know how to use GitHub. <laughs> I do. Oh, and I meant. Oh, yeah. So I was going to say. So one of the reasons this took so long is because in there are three things you have to do in Visual Studio to get. In other words, you you clone a repository, you make changes to the source code. I did make some updates, um, which I documented, you know, two three weeks ago. 
Um, and I could, they weren't showing up in GitHub and I couldn't figure out why. And it's because one of the, there's, there's UI for two of the three steps, but not for the third step. And it's like, I, the, the, the GitHub thing in Visual Studio is just unbelievable. It, it's horrible. Anyway, Raphael stepped me through it. So, um, I got that done. So anyway, it's, it's all up to date. It looks good. It works well. I think it should scalable, beautiful. How nice. And I thank you for making it open source. Cause I think a lot of people might start with might fork it and start with that and add features as needed. Mary Jo is probably going to fork say on GitHub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Mary Jo was definitely going to add some features. Mm -hmm. I'll be in yeah. there. It, I'll be in there working. She'll port with it the to the Xbox or something. Actually, Mary Jo, Do you some can pull requests. You, yeah, ooh, look at look at her. Uh, look at you, me pretending I know something. <laughs> you, you uh, actually could remove features as well. Oh, yeah, even better. Yeah, what do you, you call that? Same thing. Forking it. Pull requests. Yeah. Or Still a pull you request. are you are called out in the about box. You should download it just for. Oh that. wow. Aww. 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 That's so right. sweet. Even though I don't use the app, that's cute. That's nice. <laughs> well, you inspired <laughs> it. Yeah, it's fine. You inspired. I inspired it. Yeah, Good. Okay. Nice. It's speaking of inspiration, time for Mary Jo Foley's Enterprise Pick of the Week. Right. Uh, so there's a Microsoft service called Azure Front Door that has existed for a while. It's a content delivery network, a.k.a. CDN service that they have. And it's the service that they built for themselves to use for Bing, Microsoft 365, LinkedIn. Um, like a lot of Microsoft apps make use of this. Okay, so this week they sent me an email and they said, by the way, we just GA'd Azure Front Door. And I said, wait, this has existed for a while. And I went to the blog post and I realized they re-architected Azure Front Door to make it a modern cloud-friendly um, service. They, uh, they integrated in security as part of the service. They came up with two new pricing plans. And now we've got three different things all called Azure Front Door at Microsoft because we know Microsoft has a problem with naming things. <laughs> so now there's Azure Front Door, the new service that just came out. We have Azure Front Door Classic, the one that already existed. And then the one before that, Azure CDN from Microsoft Classic. So yeah, there are three things now called Azure Front Door, basically, or Azure CDN. Um, they're under different pricing plans. They're under different... Um, licensing schemes. So you should go look up Microsoft's blog post on the Azure blog. If you are somebody who needs or wants or uses an, an, a CDN service, especially if you want one from Azure, because there are multiple versions of this now. The newest one, of course, is the best because it has security built in, um, better, supposedly better, easy, easier licensing. I'll let people who use CDNs be the judge of that. Uh, but yeah, now there are three Azure CDN services. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And pick number Microsoft two. Microsoft naming, naming, yeah. what happened to you guys? It's very like, confusing. Really? <laughs> There's so few names that we've run out. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, so I may have made this a pick a long time in the past, but there's a reason I'm making it the pick again. Uh, if you go on Twitter, at Azure End of Life, um, they also have a, an associated dashboard on GitHub and a newsletter you can sign up for. This is a really interesting service. It gives you a heads up on all the things that Microsoft is deprecating ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And you may be like, oh, how many th things are they deprecating? Um, a lot, especially all lately. The all the things, right? There's yeah. so many Azure services that are being deprecated and they're not being deprecated right away necessarily. You know, sometimes they give you a heads up of two, three, four years even. But just so you, if you're an IT pro, you need to keep track of this stuff because there's so many things being deprecated all the time around Azure. Um, so yeah, I would say subscribe to Azure End of Life on Twitter and probably also subscribe to the newsletter. This is a really cool thing. It's from Tom Kirkove, who now works for Microsoft. He didn't used to work for Microsoft when he started this. Uh, but yeah, he's still keeping it going. Very useful for IT pros who need to be in the know about what's ending when in terms of support. Notion wanted to change deprecations to depredations, but I slapped, <laughs> I slapped it down. <laughs> You're like, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's good. 
That's a good name for a blog. Depredations. Depredations. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Deprecate the depredations. Depredations, yes. a life story. <laughs> you know, somebody, Microsoft should really go talk to some people in the beer business because they, they are so good at names. They really are. Right. <laughs> this one, I love the name, although it doesn't, it doesn't sound like it would, it sounds like it tastes. You know what I'm saying? It sounds like it should be yeah. kind of something grimmer. <laughs> yeah. So the brewery is grim. The beer is plink. P-L-I-N-K. Oh, I get it. It's so pink. It's, it's pink. I get it. Okay. It's very pink, uh, like bright fluorescent pink. Uh, it's made with hibiscus. That's what makes it pink. And a little orange zest. It's considered a sour, but it is very fruity, I feel like. I had some this weekend, and I'm like, this is a spring beer. This is like a beer you'd want to have at good. brunch on Easter, Ooh, right? Yeah. It's it's very fruity. It's low ABV, like 5.7. That's pretty low, um, <laughs> given how beers are these days. Um, very, it's it's sour, yet not so sour that it makes you pucker up. It's really, it would be a really nice beer for I, food That pairings. color is making me pucker up. Like, it, it looks yeah. sour. <laughs> it's it, very pink. It's yeah. very pink, but it's more, I'd say it's more fruity than sour. It's very fizzy. It's its almost like a pink rosé, sparkling rosé type thing oh, see? going on. Paul, you would like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if um, it was frozen. Yeah. <laughs> In a slushy. And the reason, the reason I made it the beer of the week is I feel like March is about to end. You know, the saying, March comes in like a lion, goes out like a lamb. So we're hoping it goes out like a lamb and we're ready for more spring beers and spring days and pink beers and all the good things about spring. It's an aspirational yeah. beer. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for some planking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gonna be drinking some plank. Nice. Very plink. nice. Plink is kind of like a like a gun term, isn't it? Like a, Yeah, to me when I heard grim plink, I thought this is straight out yeah, of this is like headshot. This is a hairy shooter right there in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't plink also a piano sound like plinking, plinking. the keys? Yeah, that's yeah. why yeah, yeah. they're shooting. Right. If you plink it cans, it makes, you know, with your 22 right, rifle right. it goes plink. So that's where the plink and okay. shooting comes from. <laughs> uh, my friends, we are going to conclude this fabulous episode of Windows Weekly. Uh, but I hate to end it without thanking these two stalwarts. Paul Therott at therott.com. <laughs> His book, The Field Guide to Windows 10, is at uh, leanpub.com. Or look for a GitHub commit near you. <laughs> I just got the new book onto GitHub, so it's it's getting there. Nice. It's getting there. Good. Wow. Well. It's getting there. Mary Jo Foley is uh, is <laughs> making pull Plinking requests right and left at all about, <laughs> yeah. all, it's all about Microsoft. I'm just going to do one in there just to like shock everyone. Yeah, and really? see me. Like, what? Exactly. <laughs> what? I don't. I think there should be more cats. <laughs> <laughs> there are enough think cats you in this. On GitHub works, Mary Jo. <laughs> uh, you'll find her work at uh, ZDNet. Uh, it's all about Microsoft. Dot. Com. And together, they uh, they they join us every uh, Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC. If you want to watch us live at live.twit.tv, you can also listen live. There's streams in both uh, at that place. Uh, you'll also uh, get on-demand versions at twit.tv slash WW. Uh, there's a YouTube channel. And probably the easiest thing to do is just, you know, open up your podcatcher and subscribe so you get it automatically the minute it is available. We invite our members of Club Twit uh, to stand up and take a bow today because, as you may have noticed, there were zero ads, which means this, uh, this show was brought to you thanks to Club Twit. Thank you, Club Twit. It's seven bucks a month, ad-free versions for everyone of all the shows. You also get access to the great Club Twit Discord, which is a lot of fun. Mary Jo Foley's always in there having a good time uh, with all the animated GIFs. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just glad she's abusing other people with these. Now. I am. I like to abuse Paul with this too on Skype. <laughs> you know, you can put them in Notion as well. Um, yeah. If you're, uh, or, you know, you, or don't. You or know. don't. Or not. Or not. <laughs> if you are uh, not yet a member of Club Twit and you would like to support what we do, go to twit.tv slash Club Twit. $7 a month, it's month to month, so it's easy to cancel if you don't feel like you're getting your money's worth, but it really is a big help to us, especially on days like this. I really appreciate our club members. 
Thank you, Club Twit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. We'll hey, see. by the way, so yes, I, uh, yes, I am yes. doing an uh, Ask Me Anything tomorrow. Oh, I forgot to mention. Oh, nice. Paul, uh, what time is that, Paul? Noon? Uh, noon, my time. You're so probably 9 a.m. Pacific. 9 a.m. your time. Uh, that is also something that we do live for Club Twit members. It's one of many special uh, events that we do in Club Twit. Um, it's uh, going to appear on the Twit Plus feed if you can't be there at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern tomorrow. Thank you for doing that, Paul. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, no problem. I f I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause yeah, that's one I'm of glad the. Glad I remember that. <laughs> Where I think I for seven bucks notes. a month, you get an awful lot, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yep. And I, I know it sounds self-serving if I say that, but you know, none of that money goes in my pocket, so <laughs> it, it really goes to operating expenses and to developing new stuff like our uh, Untitled Linux show and This Week in Space and all of the stuff that comes out of Club Twit. So thank you in advance. Twit.tv/club. Twit. See Paul tomorrow. Answer all the questions he refuses to answer for me. <laughs> but Anne is more persuasive, I think. Well, yeah. I guess we'll <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Mary Jo. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. The world is changing rapidly. So rapidly, in fact, that it's hard to keep up. That's why Micah Sargent and I, Jason Howell, talk with the people making and breaking the tech news on Tech News Weekly every Thursday. They know these stories better than anyone. So why not get them to talk about it in their own words? Subscribe to Tech News Weekly and you won't miss a beat every Thursday at twit.tv.